I believe in science. Believe? Has science become a religion? Don't get me wrong, I love science. I studied science extensively at high school and went on to get a science degree. I'm not a practicing science, however I did study physics, chemistry and statistics, and academically I did very well. Now I know that doesn't make me an expert, and I'm certainly not claiming to be one, however I am very familiar with the scientific method. In this presentation I'm not claiming that you should ignore the science, but certainly you shouldn't blindly follow it either. Blindly following anything is not very scientific. Actually, one could argue that it's the opposite of what the scientific method teaches. I believe in science. Has anybody else heard people saying this a lot of late? It's usually used as a kind of retort when somebody questions or disagrees with a particular scientific or medical proposition. Some people might be using it to vaguely say that they have confidence in the scientific method and trust in its ability to achieve valid and meaningful results while others are basically declaring a belief in a particular proposition which either they do not understand or which is outside their knowledge. They're essentially saying, I trust that the scientists and researchers have done the right thing and have given me truthful and valid information and therefore there's no need for me to investigate the claim any further. More recently though, the expression is being used in an almost derogatory way and is being used to suppress debate. That is, people are essentially saying, I believe in science and am therefore accusing you of being anti-science. The problem I have with this expression, no matter what the intent, is the word believe. Believe, verb, to have confidence in the truth or existence of something not immediately susceptible to rigorous proof. Belief to me indicates that some sort of faith is required. For example, I believe in God. I believe in ghosts. Unfortunately for the believers out there, science requires proof, something that belief doesn't encapsulate. Without proof, it's not really science. You shouldn't believe in science no more than you should believe in the heat radiating from the sun. You either understand how the sun heats the earth, or you don't. It doesn't require belief in any way. Science is about hypotheses, theories, experiments, evidence, and facts. Belief doesn't come into it, nor should it. A healthy dose of skepticism. Unfortunately, people who say, I believe in science, are usually saying it in response to people who are being skeptical. They equate being skeptical to being anti-science. But you know what else? Sorry, do you know who else is skeptical as part of their job? Scientists. Yes, the scientific method requires skepticism. If scientists weren't skeptical, they would always accept the current scientific status quo and never try to improve on it. As many of us would already know, scientific knowledge is ever-changing, and that's good. Science is based on experiments, testing, retesting, and then stating claims, and then revisiting those claims and testing them again and again over time. As medical students are often told in medical colleges, half of what you'll learn over the next four years will be shown to be either dead wrong or out of date within five years of your graduation. The trouble is that nobody can tell you which half, so the most important thing to learn is how to learn on your own. I've seen the number of years in this quote often changing. Sometimes it's 10 years, sometimes it's 20 years, but the point is, scientific and medical knowledge is constantly evolving and changing. Does this mean we shouldn't ever trust science? No, of course not, but it does mean that we should always have a healthy dose of skepticism. Is it ever wise to say, I believe in science? To me, it's a very naive statement. We can go back to any point in history and find examples of what we would consider to be ridiculous beliefs that were considered completely true by the intellectuals of the time. Historical examples. 1920s to 2000s, lead in petrol. When I grew up in the early 80s, it was quite normal to have lead in petrol to improve engine performance. In the 1920s, leaded petrol was considered safe. Its inventor, Thomas Midgley, was sure of it. He even washed his hands with it at a press conference. It actually wasn't until 1st of January 2002 that leaded petrol was completely phased out of Australia due to the harmful nature of its main ingredient, 
tetraethyl lead, which was a major contributor to the high levels of pollution, and had links to heart disease, stroke, cancer, birth complications, and intellectual impairment of children. Although some scientists were fighting for it to be banned many years before, unfortunately, for many decades, all studies of the use of tetraethyl lead were conducted by laboratories and scientists funded by the Ethyl Corporation and General Motors. Obviously, they had no interest in admitting its dangers. Believe it or not, it wasn't until July 2021 that Algeria became the last nation in the world to stop selling leaded petrol. 1980s Lead Pipes it wasn't until 1986 that the US Congress banned the use of lead pipes, but allowed those already in the ground to remain, remembering that they're being advised by the top scientists. Consequently, there is still lead-tainted water being pumped to some communities in the US. Obviously, this is more of a political issue than a scientific one, but still, it makes an important point. Science is inextricably linked with politics and funding. 1950s and 60s – Thalidomide Created in Germany, thalidomide was heavily marketed to pregnant women for helping prevent morning sickness. We all know how that turned out. Tens of thousands of children either died or were born with terrible birth defects. It would have looked a bit foolish to say at the time, I believe in science, as your child was born with missing legs. 1930s to the 1950s – Smoking It was quite common for doctors to promote smoking during this era. Of course, many of them were being paid to do so by big tobacco, but many physicians honestly believe that there was not a widespread connection between smoking and disease. Instead, it was believed that only certain individuals' health was affected by smoking. It was thought to be a case-by-case -case situation. At that time, would you be the person saying, I believe in science and continued to smoke because your doctor told you it was okay? If you did, I wouldn't blame you, but your belief would have been proven to be wrong decades later. 1850 – Hand Washing for Surgeons Hungarian obstetrician Ignaz Semmelweis theorised that physicians delivering babies were the cause of postpartum infections due to the common practice of doctors delivering babies after conducting barehanded autopsies. He implemented a basic hand-washing protocol in the maternity ward, which proved successful, reducing death rates from 18% to 2.2%. However, his colleagues didn't agree, and he was increasingly the target of derision in medical circles throughout Europe. He was seen as a pariah for challenging the status quo. Eventually, his mental health was called into question, and he was admitted to a mental hospital where he was physically beaten. Unfortunately, he succumbed to his injuries just a few days later. Even top medical professionals at the time didn't want to admit that the science that they had always practiced was wrong. Washing your hands before medical procedures was considered silly. Antiquity until the late 19th century – Bloodletting Yes, the withdrawal of blood from a patient to prevent or cure illness and disease was one of the most commonly practiced medical procedures performed by surgeons during this time period. Although there are a few very specific medical conditions where bloodletting does help, in the overwhelming majority of cases, the historical use of bloodletting was harmful to patients. 1810s – Lead Sealed Canned Food Yes, it was normal to seal cans with lead. Actually, in October 2019, America's Food and Drug Administration found that almost half of samples of canned food that they tested had detectable lead, including a staggering 98% of canned fruit samples. It seems we never learn. Pre-16th century – Earth-centred universe For thousands of years, the Earth was considered the centre of the universe. Even famous Greek philosopher and polymath Aristotle was convinced of this. He believed he had established it to be incontrovertibly true. But he was wrong. In or around 1514, Polish polymath and astronomer Nicholas Copernicus theorised that the Sun was at the centre, not the Earth. But he resisted openly publishing his views, not wishing to risk the scorn to which he would expose himself on account of the novelty and incomprehensibility of his theses. In 1610, Italian astronomer Galileo championed Copernicus's theory, but the matter was investigated by the Roman Inquisition in 1615, which concluded that heliocentrism was foolish, absurd, and heretical, since it contradicted Holy Scripture. Eventually, he was tried by the Inquisition, found vehemently suspect of heresy, and forced to recant, spending the rest of his life under house arrest. 
pre-15th century, human sacrifice. If you go back a couple of thousand years, people believed that human sacrifice resulted in improved crop yields. I know that's more religious than scientific belief, as there was no such thing as the scientific method back then, but people actually believed it. So if you were a person in the 1800s who believed in science, you would have believed in bloodletting when you had a headache, not washing your hands before surgery, that smoking was good for you, and eating out of a lead can wasn't an issue. Actually, you are a scientific skeptic at heart. Even people who say, I believe in science, don't always believe in science. For example, second opinions. If you go to the doctor and he says, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but you have a melanoma on your leg. The only way to successfully treat this without you dying is to amputate your leg. No worries, doctor. I believe in science. When can you take the leg off? Is tomorrow afternoon okay? Sure. Of course not. In that case, a rational person would almost always seek a second opinion. Is this being anti-scientific? No, it's being sensible. Actually, medical practitioners often recommend that you seek out a second opinion, especially if it's regarding a life-changing diagnosis. That's how people make informed healthcare decisions. Blindly trusting anything is not very scientific. Science students at university are taught to be skeptical and are taught to investigate everything they observe or read. When reading a journal article, simply checking who the research is funded by is a good place to start. Nowadays, it's easy to investigate. Many published journal articles are available free of charge, especially to university students. But all that said, don't ignore science. Of course, none of this is saying that you should ignore science. Of course not. But everything we hear, especially new information, we should always hold to account. We should always have a healthy dose of skepticism. We also have to admit that scientists are only people. As with other people, scientists have their biases. They get things wrong. They make mistakes. Scientists can be influenced by research funding, as we saw with tetraethyl lead or smoking. For example, if you're a scientist being paid by the meat industry to prove that diets that include meat are more healthy than ones that don't, are you going to come back and tell your employers that actually vegetarian diets are healthier? Well, if you did, you can wave your funding goodbye. Now, of course, I'm not saying that all scientists are swayed to this extent by funding, but surely many of them are. We are, after all, living in a capitalist world where we need to earn a living. Final thoughts. The point is, there's nothing wrong with questioning things, and actually that's exactly what scientists do as part of the scientific method. If you believe in science without questioning it in any way, then you're treating science like some kind of religion. The best you can really say is that you believe in the current scientific consensus, but after five or ten years, many of those things won't be considered true anymore. However, if you mean that you trust and believe in the scientific method, then you should also believe that rigorous skepticism is essential. Perhaps instead of saying, I believe in science when somebody questions you, you should instead say, I understand the science related to this particular issue. And if you don't understand the science, then what the hell are you saying anything for? Go out and educate yourself on the topic first by looking up the most recent journal articles and the like. One final warning. In a perfect world, science would be incorruptible, but it's not. Unfortunately, most research only exists because of funding. If the funding doesn't exist, the research doesn't get conducted. And here's the final warning. If a private company is conducting its own research to prove the benefits and safety of a product it will be selling for profit, be very, very cautious. You've been warned.